that you no longer had curiosity to learn how it happened. If you, the day you stop looking because you're content God did it, I don't need you in the lab. You're useless mm. on the frontier of understanding the nature <laughs> of the world. Bill O'Reilly gets schooled by Neil deGrasse Tyson on God. Let's see this video. Now, when you talk about these things, somebody in the audience must come up, I assume, and say, well, oh, we only understand 4% of this stuff. Yeah, that's great. So how I love that, it. <laughs> how, how is that different from Bill O'Reilly saying, well, in that case, the rest of it's God. And we, you, you guys are just, you're just expounding beliefs here. You've got no evidence. The for the 96 percent the difference is we do understand the tides the tides are part of the four percent we understand so bill o'reilly is giving a list of things that are fully understood if he had given a list of things that are not understood okay that would be a different reaction and it would be less susceptible to comedic mockery than saying tides come in and out you can't explain that it's like, yes, we can. We've known that one for the last couple of hundred years. Give me a better example. So if he said, <laughs> there's dark matter and there's, there's dark energy forcing an expansion of the universe so fast that it's accelerating. You can't explain that. Right. We can't explain it. <laughs> okay. I don't think he knows enough physics to be able to tell us what it is we don't understand yet. That would have been a more interesting exchange with the atheist guy. I, I forgot his name, forgive me, but the guy who, who, who he was interviewing. Now, if he wants to use that as evidence for God, but then we just have to come back and say, well, <laughs> doesn't mean if you don't understand it, something and the community of physicists don't understand it, and stand it, that means God did it? Is that, is that how you want to play this game? Yeah, because as soon as you discover that there's a natural or some explanation you just don't understand yet and you want to give it to God, well, you take it back from God once you find out how it works. Because if it is, here's a list of the things in the past that the physicist at the time didn't understand. Ah. And a talk show you might have conducted 200 years ago would have said, the planets do retrograde? Can't understand that. Must be a God. <laughs> and we'd say, you know, you're right. And then 10 years later, we understand it. So what do you do? So you're, if, that's how, if that's how you want to invoke your evidence for God, then God is an ever-receding pocket of scientific ignorance that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as time moves Interesting. on. Interesting. So just be ready for that to happen if that's how you want to come at the problem. So that's just simply the God of the gaps argument. It's been around forever. So, in fact, people who want to make arguments. And by the way, hey, wait, wait. And I don't, I don't even mind. I don't even care if someone wants to say, you don't understand that. God did it. I, that doesn't even bother me. What would bother me is if you were so content in that answer that you no longer had curiosity to learn how it happened. If the day you stop looking because you're content God did it, I don't need you in the lab. You're useless mm. on the frontier of understanding the nature <laughs> of the world. And if the world had been, if, if I'm glad whoever those folks are, there aren't that many of them, because if they dominated the world, we'd still be in the cave. We would have never left the cave because there are mysterious things out there. And no, God is doing that. And you don't need to know that. And don't even think about it. Where would we be if their understanding of the world ruled the world? Yeah. So I don't mind it, but just don't prevent others. You know he's hinting at some religious folks that definitely have that kind of outlook, if you will, about all of the unknowns in the universe and just, that's God. And you could see it. They're so discouraged by those who are critical and scientific-minded today. They almost want to shut their brains off um, but a lot of it is deceptive apologetics that they engage in, too. It's from uh, conducting that investigation themselves. Yeah. So he could, have made a, he could have made a better case if he'd had an astrophysicist as a consultant advising him. <laughs> he would have made a different case. Find some physics we don't understand, and if he wants to call that God, mm -hmm. no, then you come at him with the God of the gaps argument. But uh, 
you don't pick something that we can understand because then you're just object of mockery. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think is a thoughtful scientist supposed to think or the best, the, the most reasonable thing that a thoughtful scientist is supposed to think about religion? And I'm now, now I'm talking about religion in general, not just about the supernatural specifically, you know, not just God, but also religion as an institution and so on and so forth. I mean, you think that there is any such thing as Oh, well, yes, scientists really should be thinking along those lines, or you, I expect them to think more about those lines. Yeah, I can't and I won't speak for other scientists. I, they have well, you own... just spoke for Dawkins, but yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fair I know enough. him personally, so <laughs> right, right. I can make some judgment as to how he would have responded to those questions. But He, do he does interview Dawkins often. I can't and I won't speak for other scientists, but you know the statistics as well as I do. It, in, in some surveys, it's as high as 40% of scientists in America would claim a personal God, a God to whom they can pray, who would intercede in their daily affairs. And it's fascinating to see the spread among the scientific disciplines in that number, because some would come in higher and others would come in lower, of course, so that it averages at about uh, 40%. And the astrophysicists, the physicists, the biologists come in lowest, the mathematicians, the engineers come in highest, above 40%. I'm, in, I'm intrigued by it. That's an intriguing fact. Uh, if you want to say that high education and scientific training promotes atheism, how come that number isn't zero? In fact, go to the National Academy of Sciences and do the same survey with them. The number still does not go to zero. It asks yeah, but that doesn't mean that every person in there isn't going to have some form of religious experience. They are human still, right? So I imagine the number's so drastic, though. You said 7% in a different interview. That's massive. That's like 7% of, of them believe out of, what, 93% that don't, percentage-wise. It's about 7%. You've seen the numbers. Yep. So 7% of the most elite scientists claim a personal God who answers their prayers. And if you can't convince that 7% of the absence of God as an ardent atheist, uh, why, why are you running around to people who are not so educated, who are not so scientifically trained, and complaining that they're a bunch of idiots for how they feel? <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's disingenuous. It's, it's, it's an unfair battle you are picking when people in your own church, <laughs> so, to, so to speak, so, so to speak, right. are, disagree with you about that very premise. And yeah. so, so that's how I view this. I, I think it's go c convert the 7%. And until that goes to zero at the National Academy of Sciences, shut up about what the rest of the public thinks and feels. Unless, unless, let me make it clear, because in my Big Think video, I analogize gathering atheists together to talk about their disbelief in God as uh, I analogize that to, well, is there a word for non-golfers? Do non-golfers all gather and complain about the fact that other people watch golf all the time? No, of course not. All right. And by that same rationale, I cannot see myself going into a room talking about how God doesn't exist. I can't. Yeah. So so me and him come from a different background. Clearly, he's never been a fundamentalist and obviously he's never been duped or had the traumas of religion uh, in his own life. But also, um, you know, when you make a living talking about science, for example, you're going to likely talk about pseudoscience or you're going to talk about things that you think are false along the way while you're talking about accurate science. In fact, the field of science is all about debunking falsifications and stuff. And I get you want to just move the category of God to like this, eh, well, it doesn't matter kind of area. But um, to us, it may matter. It matters to a point where we want to get people thinking critically, get people questioning, get people learning about these things the same way you want them to learn about science and factual, accurate science. Well, I want them to know about history, and I also want them to consider good reasons to think, why would your God actually exist? There, it's, just, um, it's just that the name atheism is like not theism, right? So... You don't get like a leprechaunist. We've heard this before. You don't get a fairyist, things like that. Um, that's it's unfortunate. There's a category for that, but I think that's because the overwhelming audience of America, not just America, but the population of the world, 
is religious, believes in a God. So it's always been taboo and used as a negative to point at people who don't believe in certain gods. They called them atheists. Even Christians were called atheists in the distant past. So maybe we need to drop the term atheism. I don't know. But it's just uh, Neil has a different uh, approach, and he has every right to do that, whereas other people that are you know, scientific-minded skeptics do talk about atheism and do talk about non-belief in God, even Richard Dawkins, whom he's interviewed several you know, times. I can't do that. Well, I, I, I want to do different things with my time. However, however, I see myself as a responsible educator, and in that role— if you want to put your creation philosophies into a science classroom, I'm going to stand at the gate and prevent that right. with, with all that I can. And basically with all that I can in my power, I know we've got other people who are in the courts doing it and that may be more than I have the energy to do, but I'm going to be vocal about it. And I'm going to say, no, it doesn't belong in the science classroom. Yeah. So he's okay. He's kind of saying what I was saying and he will go against pseudoscience or false sciences and I feel like the same thing about religion. I'm not saying it doesn't belong anywhere. Put it in comparative religion. Put it in religious philosophy class. Sure. Go ahead. I don't have an issue with that. To be to be fair, um, you mean, I mean, I hear you. To be fair, of course, um, I think I, I, I'm going to. It's my turn to channel Dawkins now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, you know, somebody like Dawkins would say, "Yeah, but but you know, golf players don't do quite as much damage to humanity." As, as some at least religious religious no no so the issue there well, excuse me <laughs> the issue there is not that religious people through religious wars and and right. other crazy behavior like flying planes into buildings it's not that religious people mess up society that's the wrong way to look at this the issue is dogma in any form messes up society you yeah. can have political dogma yeah I would which agree. is has no less guilt messing up society as religious dogma. The issue here is dogma. You fight dogma. And if it happens to be under the guise of religion, fine. But as an educated scientist, atheist, if you're going to go out there and fight religious people, you're really fighting dogma, where people want you to believe something in the absence of evidence and make that policy. Yeah, but how much dogma is there in golf? So your analogy still falls apart. Make that educational curricula uh make legislation based on that that's where you have problems and that's where you get nazism that's where you get the the um uh lysenkoism yeah. that's where you get all of these isms that have risen up that had some of them even had some some patina of being academically derived but when you actually part the curtains there is dogmatic in, invocation of rules established by some committee of people who decide how they want you to think about all the various topics. I, I agree. Yeah, so I agree too. I mean, he is right, but damn, does it not get channeled through religion a lot, right? So I get it. There's good and bad religion. I get it. I'm not even like saying people shouldn't practice whatever religion they want to practice. Believe if you want. Um, I don't have answers for the afterlife. But... I am also saying when your dogmas are clearly creating chaos in the world, you know, we got a problem. And when you see that in religion, we got a problem. When you see that in political stuff, we got a problem, period. It's a human problem. But I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. So tell me, was Nil on point? Was he not on point? Do you disagree with him? Do you think religion is more dangerous than just you know, political and, and all that. What are your thoughts about it? Drop it in the comments because YouTube pays attention to the engagement. Mind you, ladies and gentlemen, 92% of people watching this channel have not subscribed. 8% of you watchers are subscribers. Hit the subscribe button. Check that bell so you're notified every time we drop a reaction. And comment down below. Like the video. Share it out there. Go check out our Patreon down in the description. Until next time, see you then.